Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. So today, I have a really basic quarry uh, that I designed, uh, and basically this quarry is capable of mining all these blocks within this giant volume here. So you'll, you, uh, here I have three by trenches, uh, by the way, I've had to make these trenches. Uh, they don't need to be three by. This one only needs to be one wide, and if you really wanted to, this one doesn't even need a clearance. So this could just be straight flush with the wall, but obviously then you're vulnerable to liquids. Okay, so uh, this is a top-down quarry, which I know are very bad, but this is mainly focused on being a very beginner uh, influence quarry, which not that beginner should really be doing quarries, but in case you do, like Dustus, where we built a quarry before we even had a uh, uh, diamond armor, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm also going to sell the corp for right now just so that I can get a, a little bit of a better explanation. Uh, but basically, what happens is we have these bottom fly machines, which right now are going down, and we also have these top ones. Uh, also, these top ones are can be slightly modified. This is going to be the final automatic. Uh, this one, as I said, was pasted by Penta, so I showed him to do a couple of changes. Uh, so, here you can see that we have a new and improved. Uh, tunnel war here, which basically covers this observer, which could previously cause some issues with snow layers and lightning. Uh, the, the, the quarry isn't completely liquid proof, but it's so easy to make it liquid proof that it's fine, honestly. Uh, and I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that near the, near the end. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to, uh, take a look down here on how we're actually pushing the blocks in. So here we have this uh, piston line, which can be activated from the middle. So this was a redesign of a. Uh, or sorry, this this design here was influenced by a design by One Tick Pulse. Uh, I might leave the video in the description, the uh, quarry that he made, which was also the influence for this quarry, by the way. So, basically, these piston worms could take uh, up to twelve blocks. They send it all the way to this side. On this side, get, they get pushed into a blast chamber. Uh, you can adjust these hoppers for anything, really. Also, this actually isn't uh, just broken here. My client likes to, uh, for some reason, blow up obsidian. Same with pencils lately, so I can't even get him to record a good clip of this. But yeah, basically, for some reason, obsidian is now breakable. Alright, so, uh, I'm not actually completely sure what this clearance is here, so we can see one, two, three. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, hell of a 12, I guess. You're probably, or actually, yeah, it's 12. Right there. Okay. So, uh, I'm not sure how low the quarry is actually going to mine down to, but it's a factor of when this bottom station here, it's right here, around. And then, obviously, you can't mine any further than that because you can't go down more. Alright, so. Uh, you might notice that there's obviously two sides here, but there's no wiring in between, so there's nothing to be seen here. Uh, so what we're actually doing is we send a flying machine, when we go to move this side down, uh, we send a flying machine, it crashes into this side here, then this side moves it down and sends it back, and then it also moves down this flying machine, which pushes down all of the redstone blocks first, and then the piston. And that's how I get the uh, shield of piston. And also, you do need one for every single block, because this is mining uh, two layers of blocks. Uh, if one could get pushed further, then these pistons would start making a shield, and that wouldn't be good. Anyways, so uh, also this is a modified version of uh, what's currently in the lightmatic. So anyone that has the current lightmatic of this quarry, uh, get the new one from the description. Because the old one was directional. Uh, basically, you can see here, or yeah, so here we launch the grabbers right before the bottom grabbers pull up. Uh, and you can see both models of the tunnel will work. It's just this one has an exposed observer and this one doesn't. Uh, and they all go to the very end. Uh, or will they pick up blocks, and if they can't, they go to the very end. Uh, the end one here has an observer, because at the end we form an observer clock here. This is for an AND gate, so this goes all the way to the back. 
and that would tell these bottom machines to launch and go down. Once it goes down, this Y machine goes, uh, it pushes everything in, puts it into the piston worms, and that's, yeah, how we use that cycle. Here, uh, we use a little bit of dust, but it's pretty much nothing. I think it goes to the quarry, how much is there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, around 11, 12, sorry, 12 dust is used. Maybe a little bit for the aligner and also the duper. But it's not that much, so it's about 14, 15 maybe. Uh, and it doesn't all get activated at the same time, so it doesn't really matter. So, uh, how do we move the tunnel bars down? Well, we have a three-way flying machine here. So this pushes half of the machine down for, on the first run. Then on the on the returning way, it, launch, it puts down the second half, which would launch all the machines uh, with a 10 game tick uh, delay on each block. So it's 30 game tick delay, oh sorry, yeah, I think it's, what is it? Yeah, 30 game tick delay in between each flying machine getting launched uh, when it's moving down, uh, which is actually perfect because for the flying machine here, in case the piston on the machine, which would be right here, you can see that there's slime on this layer as well from the block grabbers. So if it wasn't that 10 game tick delay and we made that machine any faster, uh, th then it could pick up the piston here. Uh, off the machine, which was also an issue. But as long as your uh, what do you call it? Your length is longer than your width. Which I mean, if you're not doing that, then why are you building a quarry? Uh, then it should be pretty straightforward, and everything should work. Okay, so uh, here we also have a observer line. So this is a completely instant wireless quarry as well, which is really nice. Uh, I decided that it was kind of annoying to have to set up instant wires in quarries, uh, especially because they most of them uh, require abutted pistons, and those are just painful to place, honestly. So I just decided to go for this, and it worked out quite well. Uh, just to give you a rough time scale on just how easy it is to build this quarry, I'm actually going to log into the SMP of Dustless, because we've recently built up this quarry. Uh, and I also showed this in my latest Dustless episode. But here you can see we're actually using it for our end island. And this is the exact same size as the one that we saw in the CMP. Uh, but here we're just using, or we're finding end stone instead. This is for our main end island. It's been going for, I don't even know how long, probably like a couple of days, maybe a week, just barely. Uh, and you guys could see all the end stone getting pulled off. Uh, pretty much in the same pattern as the overworld is. Uh, in total, this this quarry here should take about around, I would say, 20 days. Uh, keep in mind that this was built much shorter than the one that was on uh, the coffee. Uh, and yeah, we made a couple of changes here. So we put in a water stream, uh, and this just elevates it all the way to our end portal. But yeah, so... Another nice feature about this quarry, which I should also probably mention, which is the reason that I actually really wanted to do this on Dustless instead of any other top-down quarry, it is near logicless. All you need to tell the machine is how many slices to mine. So, how many times these flying machines here are going to go back and forth. So here we have, I believe, 175 or 173, I'm not sure which one. Uh, probably 173. And each light, or each time it goes down, these slime shoots here, that observer right there is going to activate the snow block and decrease the layer system by one. Once it's decreased, this block gets dropped, and also this uh, reactivation for sending the machines gets uh, pulled out. Uh, and what that does is when this machine here would return, it'll activate the rail line, then the signal can actually go through, and then it'll launch this flying machine. This fly machine is the one that is responsible for moving everything down. So it tells this piston that it's done, and then uh, this piston will retract, pulling everything here, and then sending out all the machines. Okay, that's basically how the quarry works. Uh, we can also go see just how much endstone we got within around a week, I would assume. Maybe like five, six days. But here we already have 100,000 endstone and a little bit more, plus the hopper as well. So, as I said, not really a fast quarry, but uh, considering, uh, keep in mind, 
Uh, I dug a lot of endstone, especially on Hypnos. I mined about 110,000, I believe. I'm not sure what the actual scoreboard is. Uh, but one thing that I can say is that it is very painful to mine it. And with the speed of uh, the mining, it's pretty much just as good to build a quarry. Uh, especially the size of a quarry. Okay, so now let's take a look at how long it actually took me to build the quarry. So, the first thing to keep in mind is that I did this alone. I did this before pretty much anyone woke up, Chez or Penta, which are pretty much the only people that probably would have helped with this. Uh, and also, I did this in two hours, and within those two hours, I got the materials for it, and I also did a school assignment, because why not? So, yeah, this is super simple to, to set up. This, the, I mean, the side on, or this side here is pretty much AFK at this point. You just build a small self-returning flying machine, and that's pretty much it. Also, for the return, in case you didn't already see, we're just using two observers. That's good enough of a return station. Alright, so yeah, it's a very simple quarry to build, uh, and honestly, I'm not even sure if it's worth building, it's kind of debatable. Let's go back on to here, or we can actually see the machines going again. Alright, so, uh, one thing that I should say, uh, I designed this machine, uh, not by the way that I do slimestone, but for uh, basic players. I didn't use, uh, what do you call it, a piston to hold back the machines here. These are held back by push limit. I'm sorry if you know me, I do not like using push limit. It is one of my rules in Slimestone, and I really hate it. But you know what? I had to, so cry about it. But anyways, uh, so yeah, all these machines here are uh, stopped by push limit. The back ones aren't, actually. So these ones have a de designated piston. So you don't need to worry about having to attach more blocks or taking off blocks uh, to, to these machines. And the machine should also be quite easy to change for push limit 13. Uh, but yeah, it's not that much of a, of a big deal. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it with the quarry. I should say that there are a couple things that the quarry won't mind. So leaves are kind of an issue, not really. Uh, but if I come to this side here... You can see that because we have the, these one block gap, gaps in it, it might leave leaves behind. Uh, not really that much of an issue if you really wanted to. I mean, for how little leaves there's going to be, uh, you can pretty much just mine them yourself. It's not that much of an issue. Uh, we might even be able to see an example of this somewhere. Maybe. Uh, or actually, no, because all the logs get mined. So I guess that wouldn't even be an issue. But if you can place leaves or melons or pumpkins or anything, uh, they are definitely vulnerable to uh, get destroyed. Uh, also, the leaves might still also get destroyed by blocks coming through. Uh, that's another thing, but I highly doubt that, of course. Alright, so that's pretty much it with the quarry. It takes a very long time to run, uh, but pretty much everything is accounted for. We have a water failure system here, so in case there's water coming out from the side, it just uh, lands it between the trapdoors and the signs. Gravel, same thing, falls into trapdoors, gets broken. Obviously, don't run it with instant fault, that will crash the quarry. Do not do that. Uh, anyways, there's pretty much nothing else really here. Uh, gravel does pile up here, this is not an issue. Uh, when it just uh, goes to the next layer, it'll simply grab the gravel again. Bring it to the side here, and drop it down. So yeah, that's pretty much how the quarry works. I'm probably going to go make a final light matic, which has the uh, the fixed system here, and also the new system here, like this one. And that's pretty much it for this video. So just in case uh, you want me to go over the trenches again, you don't need a 3 right trench here. Uh, one wide is more than sufficient, as long as there's no liquids. Uh, then over here... You can also see, I don't know why they spotted water here. Uh, this can, this probably could be a one wide trench, to be honest. For how uh, safe the quarry is at running, because we have an AM gate system here, you're pretty much good to just not have a trench on this side, just leave it. Uh, the back trench here only needs to be three wide, so this is the one that Penta actually got right. <laughs>
Uh, and over here, how wide of the trench is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 12, 13. So yeah, 13 wide trench here. So that's actually uh, smaller than a world leader uh, trenches. So it's a lot easier to build than a world leader, I would actually say. Which is quite ironic, considering how slow it is. Uh, but yeah. Uh, obviously, you need, need to account for a little bit of head clearance here, so... Here, you don't actually need to clear out this much space, obviously. You can uh, build just a... or you can mine where you need to put the stuff. Uh, but for a little bit here, there's like a flying machine, so you gotta account for that, of course. The flying machine comes up to about, like, here. Uh, and then, obviously, you want one block clearance, so your wall would be around there. Alright. So, uh, that's pretty much it with the clearances. Uh, I don't think there's anything really else to go over. You can probably just use two tunnel bores here, or just a height stack tunnel bore, uh, to clear out this area. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, or really, if you wanted to, you could also do the trenches, uh, a little bit larger. You're probably gonna dupe these anyways, so it's not really gonna matter all that much. Uh, this system here should be quite easy to replace with the dispenser. Let me just replace the duper with the dispenser, and then, uh... Actually, yeah, I think that you can straight up replace the duper with the dispenser from this observer here. This should work. Like this. Uh, that should get, get the right delay, I'm pretty sure. You might want to try that, though. Uh, also, I would highly recommend getting a better blast chamber than this one, because it is very PNT, like, not efficient. So, yeah, definitely improve that. Also, don't use hoppers here. It's just because I wanted to make the light matic for the nether. Uh, anyways, that's pretty much it with the quarry. Uh, obviously there's this, uh, side here you would want to account for. Just make sure that you account for every single, uh, machine bit here. Also, this is, yeah, that would break the quarry. So let's get rid of this. And that's pretty much how the quarry works. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll leave a like a uh, fixed slightmatic of this whole thing in the description. Uh, I don't really think that there's anything else to go over, so yeah, thank you. Bye.